they may be old, but they want voters to know they're still in fighting trim. If I were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him, Biden said of Trump, in answer to a question about the president's crude comments about women. That prompted Trump to assure the nation that he would get the better of the hypothetical fist fight. But will young voters, mobilized by the movement that has sprung up in response to the high school shooting in Parkland, Florida, turn out for candidates well into their 70s? I personally intend to support somebody who is young, Howard Dean, the former Vermont governor and presidential candidate told News Pulse News. My preference is someone under 50. I think it's time we turned the page on my generation's culture wars. Dean, who is 69 now but was 55 when he ran for president, believes Democrats should aim to motivate young voters by nominating a candidate with less gray hair and more youthful energy. I think the best way to activate them is to get somebody who they can relate to, and that's someone who is young, the younger the better, Dean said. Commentators worry that Democrats might squander their opportunity to draw a contrast with an aging Republican president. Democrats could choose a challenger so old that the prospect of infirmity or mortality, or worse yet, actual infirmity or mortality during the general election campaign could give Trump just the kind of advantage he needs, columnist Ed Kilgore wrote for New York Magazine's Daily Intelligencer. For others, however, that kind of calculus smacks of discrimination. Ageism is the last ism that seems to be acceptable to people, and I never felt that it was whether somebody was too young or too old, Jane Sanders, the Vermont senator's wife told the New York Times. The focus on Sanders's age overlooks the extent to which he resonated with young voters in the 2016 campaign, routinely trouncing Hillary Clinton in primaries among millennial voters, according exit polls. While that enthusiasm is not lost on Dean, he also sees its limits. But just fielding a younger candidate may not be a surefire way to energize voters, argues Princeton University professor of history and public affairs Julian Zelizer. I think there's still probably a bias in the electorate that younger is new, younger is fresh, younger is different, but middle age still seems to be a pretty good place if you're running politically, Zelizer told News Pulse News. In the 2016 Democratic primary, the agent of change was Bernie Sanders, and in the end Democrats rallied around Hillary Clinton, who was also older. People like young and they see young as different, but when it comes time to vote, I don't think age plays as solid a role as you'd think. At age 65, one in ten Americans suffers from Alzheimer's disease or other forms of dementia, according to statistics from the National Institute on Aging. That number jumped significantly over the next 10 years of age, 17% of people age 75 to 84 are diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and 38% of people age 85 or older suffer from the disease. I would not want to have a president who is demented. I think that's dangerous, Dr. Laura Karstensen, director of Stanford University's Center on Longevity, told News Pulse News. But older people are also more likely to solve emotionally charged conflicts better than young people. Of course, that's not the case with everyone. A cardinal feature of research on aging is that the older the population that you're studying, the more variability you see. For people over 85, for instance, we would include very wise Supreme Court justices and then you have the most demented, in the same age group. I think what this means is that we have to be thinking about individuals more than age groups. While advanced age also correlates with a higher instance of cancer and heart disease, dementia poses a different level of worry. For this reason, Karstensen thinks presidential candidates should undergo cognitive testing, but not just to identify the onset of dementia. I think the idea of having people not only report their physical health records, but also their cognitive health is a good idea, Karstensen said. I wouldn't like to see us move in a direction where we're only targeting old people and only targeting one thing that could be a problem because there are a lot of other things we should be looking at. Moreover, Karstensen sees the need to evaluate the mental and physical health of all presidential candidates, young or old. At his first physical as president in January, Trump requested a cognitive assessment, which, 
his physician reported, he passed. I wouldn't want to give all people under the age of 60 a pass for being mentally fit, while targeting old people. In one of the more famous lines delivered in a presidential debate, Ronald Reagan, who was 73 when he faced off in his 1984 re-election campaign against 56-year-old Walter Mondale, deftly parried Baltimore Sun reporter Henry Trewitt's question on whether his advanced age would inhibit his ability to handle an emergency like the Cuban Missile Crisis. Not at all, Mr. Trewitt, and I want you to know that also I will not make age an issue of this campaign, Reagan responded. I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. Despite being issued a clean bill of health by his physicians, doubts about Reagan's mental acuity persisted throughout his second term. In 1994, five years after he left office at the age of 77, he announced that he had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Most of the neurologists I know suspected that something was going on with Reagan when he was still in office. Whether the job was speeding up the progression is quite another question and I don't think we have any evidence for that. Carstensen said. In 2017, the health website STAT conducted a similar analysis of decades worth of Trump on-air interviews in the 80s and 90s, and compared them with those conducted since his inauguration. Seeking the opinion of experts in neurolinguistics and cognitive assessment, the panel came to the unanimous conclusion that the president had undergone mental deterioration. Yet their findings are hardly conclusive. The experts noted clear changes from Trump's unscripted answers 30 years ago to those in 2017, in some cases stark enough to raise questions about his brain health, Sharon Begley wrote in STAT. They noted, however, that the same sort of linguistic decline can also reflect stress, frustration, anger, or just plain fatigue. The battle lines of the coming campaign are already being drawn on the subject of age. Joe Biden has been living off the swamp for five decades now, and if that is the person that the Democrats wants to run, that they think the American people wants sick then I wish them a lot of luck with that, Laura Trump said of the former vice president on Fox News. While Biden himself acknowledges that his age could be seen as a liability, he believes running against Trump would minimize those concerns. Zeliza agrees with that assessment, noting that the Democratic fervor to remove Trump from office outweighs age considerations. Still, Dean believes it's better to field a candidate who presents a clear contrast with Trump, and that starts with age. I think we need someone who's sober-minded and young, who knows what they're talking about and that's the great contrast with Trump, who is sort of this blustering guy who knows nothing and is obnoxious, frankly, to most kids. If young people can turn this moment of protest into something bigger, mobilizing voters in their 20s, for instance, you could see a shift in issues, Zelia said. Certainly with gun control, that's front and center. I don't think it's a matter of bringing new voices into the arena. I think it's more important that they shift the agenda and force candidates of all ages to deal with these questions.